So what we have is we get this balance between them. We got a forward and a reverse reaction. Because if you think about the acid, now I'm putting an X in here for any generic acid. So that X could be equal to Cl minus, could be equal to NO3 minus, could be equal to NO2 minus. It could be equal to any, any anion that we're talking about. So X is any anion that would make this, this an acid. So what we have is our acid reacting with a base. Now if you think about this side of the reaction, since this lost the hydrogen, right? it lost the hydrogen ion, it's left behind with a negative ion, this here would be considered a base, and now this has an extra hydrogen ion it can give up. So we can think of this as being an acid and a base reacting in this direction. So you got these two acid-base reactions going on simultaneously at the same time. These are what are called conjugate pairs. Conjugate pairs are when an acid loses a hydrogen ion, it creates a base, and that base is the conjugate pair of the or the conjugate of the acid. Our base leaves behind an acid, and that acid is the conjugate of that base. So every acid has a conjugate, and every base has a conjugate acid. So if we look at the example here, we can see this is the acid base, and we can see that this is the uh, conjugate base. And our, so typically, if we call them conjugates, we say that this is the acid conjugate base. So if I have HCl, this is the acid, and this would be the conjugate base, would be what's left behind after the acid does what it does. And what does an acid do? It loses hydrogen ions. So I have Cl minus. What does a base do? It takes hydrogen ions. Since it's a minus charge, it's definitely going to track that hydrogen ion with a great force, right? Because positive, negative. So that's your acid, conjugate base. If I have a base, something like NH3, then I have a conjugate acid. And therefore, I would have NH4+. Plus. So what would the conjugate acid be? Well, you add a hydrogen ion. What does the base do? It takes a hydrogen ion into its structure to make the conjugate acid. All right. Another example of a, of a base uh, would be something like fluoride. You don't really think about the fluoride ion being a base, but it will take a hydrogen ion. What it makes is a conjugate acid, and it makes the HF. Okay, so keep that in mind. You have acids and bases that create conjugates of each other. All right, so over here, I would say that the ammonia is the base. Water is acting as the acid. So therefore, what the base creates and leaves behind is a conjugate acid. So this would be considered, the ammonium would be considered a, a, an acid, an acidic substance. Okay, so we're really broadening our definition of, of acids and bases. We're starting to look at a lot more things than we did in honors that are, that are going to be considered an acid and considered a base. So here's my conjugate base would be my hydroxide. Okay, and that's what makes the solution basic, the fact that we have an OH minus. Okay, so that leaves us with what's, the, what's going on with water. is something called amphoteric. It's going to have the ability to be an acid or a base. It has the ability of behaving that way. Okay, it's capable of doing that. So essentially, the substance has to be able to absorb and release a hydrogen ion. So at minimum, you have, in order for it to be amphoteric, it should have at least a hydrogen in there. So if water is going to be amphoteric, it can be uh, considered a base. And if it's a base, you should be able to tell me what the conjugate acid is. All you do is you write it with H3O plus. Right? You just add a hydrogen ion. Add H plus ion to that. Okay? So HCO3 minus would be a base. How would it be an acid? Because it would say it would do this and it would take an ion. So we would add a hydrogen ion to go back to the conjugate acid. Now let's say we were to look at these as acids. If we were to say that the water is an acid, what should the acid do? Acids lose hydrogen ions. So therefore, to create the base, I would write this with one less hydrogen ion. Not hydrogen, but one less hydrogen ion. HCO3 minus with one less would be CO3 2 minus. Okay, so that's what makes this amphoteric because it can go as an and as a as a base or it can act as an acid. Now what that leaves us with is since we have this 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 balance between our reactants and products ba battling it out for this hydrogen ion, we're going to have relative strengths of acids. Okay, so some acids are going to be really good at losing hydrogen ions and other bases are going to be really good at pulling them. So we're going to have these relative strengths. How do we deal with strengths? Well, in a strong acid 
easily loses the hydrogen ion. It does what an acid is supposed to do. When you get confused, guys, if there's problems where you're lost, always think about what does the acid do? It loses hydrogen ions. That is the function of a Bronsted acid, Bronsted-Lowry acid. A Bronsted-Lowry base will take a hydrogen ion. The stronger the base, the higher the affinity. Affinity means pulling, strength and ability to pull. Electron affinity, here we have proton affinity. So the stronger the base, the higher the affinity for that hydrogen ion. That's what we're looking at. Ability to really pull that hydrogen ion. Okay? So that, that's the, the idea here. So if we look at this, what that's going to do is it's going to look at, we can be able to talk about our equilibrium here. Because as I said before, we're looking at this water trying to pull this hydrogen ion. This hydrogen ion is being pulled by the water. But it's not just the water that's pulling the hydrogen ion. This fluoride is also attempting to pull that hydrogen ion, right? Because there, you've got that extra hydrogen here, the fluoride is attempting to pull it back. So you get this battle between fluoride pulling this and our water. Why? Because those are the two bases in the reaction. So our equilibrium depends on which one is better at pulling, the fluoride or the water. Well, if we put the water in here, the fluoride is not going to lose that hydrogen ion to any great degree. Fluoride is going to be a better base than the water will. It's going to actually pull that hydrogen ion and bind it to itself. So the reaction is going to shift. It's only going to shift a little bit. We're not going to get much at all. But if I compare that with HCl, hydrochloric acid, which is considered a strong acid, well, this reaction, there's no equilibrium. Why? Because this chloride is not going to pull this hydrogen ion with a great force at all. It's going to really lose it. Why? Because chloride is not as strong a base as the water. Water is going to be able to take that hydrogen ion and completely remove it from the chloride. So much so that we see the reaction shifts 100% to the right. That chloride easily loses the hydrogen ion and we create a very, very strong acid. Why is it a strong acid? Because the chloride is doing what an acid is supposed to do. Well, the, the hydrochloric acid is doing what it's supposed to do. Lose a hydrogen ion. So the HCl easily loses a hydrogen ion. Whereas the hydrofluoric is going to be considered a weak acid. Why? Because that fluoride is a very strong base. That fluoride ion is a very strong base. So if you had a fluoride ion in water and you put hydrogen ion in, the, in this area, this is going to go right here. The, the fluoride ion is going to take that hydrogen ion before the water can. Now if we do that same scenario with water and chloride and you put the hydrogen ion in here, Hopefully you know what's going to go, where it's going to go. It's going to go right to the water. Why? Because water is better at attracting than the chloride is. Okay. So what that tells us is, think about this. If this is a strong acid, then this has to be a really bad base. If this is a weak acid, then the fluoride has to be a really strong base. So what we find is that this fluoride pulls the hydrogen ions and heavily favors the reaction on the reactant side. We get a heavy favoring of the reactants. Over here we get a heavily favoritism of the products. And this is why we actually say because this reaction shifts so far to the right, we can just completely ignore the equilibrium and just say that this reaction goes to completion. And that's why we can use strong acids and strong bases in our, our, our beginning of the year. Okay, last thing here. Since we have this, this strong acid, strong base equilibria, what's going to happen is the position of the equilibrium always favors the, the transfer of those protons from strong acids to the strong base, always. So the stronger base is going to easily lose, while the stronger, base, sorry, the stronger acid easily loses, while the stronger base will always take it. Now here's a chart that kind of shows what I was talking about. This shows the relative strengths of acids and bases. What's on here is, is basically the acids listed from strong to weak, to negligible, to being ignored as an acid. What does an acid do? It loses hydrogen ions. I know I keep saying this over and over again, but it's really, really important. Bases gain hydrogen ions. This concept of gaining and losing comes up a lot. Think about sodium and chloride. Sodium loses, chloride gains the electron, right? We're going to see that later with oxidation and reduction. Oxidation is going to be the loss of electrons. Reduction is going to be the gaining of electrons. So again, we get the same idea. We're going to see this over and over again. Up here at the top are considered the strong acids. These are acids that 100% dissociate. These are going to be strong, so therefore the conjugates that they have left over 
are considered very, very, very weak bases. They're not very good at pulling the hydrogen ion. So because the chloride's not good at pulling it, it's easy to remove those ions. There are seven strong acids that you must memorize. Because the way we do equilibrium later uh, in this section, it's based on whether it's a strong or a weak acid. Those seven strong acids are hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, uh, sulfuric, that's yeah, a real special one. I'll talk about that one a little bit later in another video. Uh, then there's the um, nitric, and we have HClO4. Uh, and the last one you should know is HClO3. At the end of this unit, I'll talk about why these are considered strong acids. But for now, why they're considered strong acids is because they dissociate completely. That means that this anion that's left over, the conjugate that's left over, will be a very, very weak base. So those are seven strong acids you should know. You should also know your strong bases. So make sure you commit these all to memory. Strong bases will be your soluble salts, those, those uh, sodiums, lithiums, okay, uh, potassiums. So you only have six of these. Okay, and then the other ones would be um, calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and your um, barium hydroxide. So these would be considered your six strong bases. Okay, these are the free alkali metals, alkaline earth metals. Um, calcium hydroxide kind of goes back and forth. Anyway, to read this chart, notice that the reference here is water. And the reason why water is the reference is because we dissolve these things into water. So it makes sense that water is going to be the, the, the cutoff for both of these strong and strong. So you got our strong acids, strong bases at either end of those scales. All right. Um, here's where you're going to have your sodium hydroxides, your lithium hydroxides. They're all going to fall into that category right here. Okay. Anyway, what we find is a chloride, nitrate, all of these anions are not as good at pulling the hydrogen ion as water is. Water is going to be better. So anytime a hydrogen ion comes in, water is going to take it before these ions will. Therefore, the acids always lose them. That's why they're considered strong acids. These anions in here are considered weaker ones. since Well, they're stronger than the water. Okay, They're stronger than water, and so they're considered weak bases. Okay, And these weak bases will pull hydrogen ions from water and therefore, what's going to happen is you're going to create a base. So SO4, 2 minus, what it does to water is it will take the hydrogen ion from the water. And what it does is it creates HSO4 minus and OH minus, making the water basic. So that's what's going on with these anions. Any anion that is not coming from a strong acid will be considered a base. Any anion that's from a strong acid will not be considered a base. It's really important. We're going to talk about this quite a bit. So if I have a very strong acid, I have a weak conjugate base. If I have a very weak ba acid, I get a really strong conjugate um, ba base. And then the opposite goes back and forth. A weak base, I get a weak conjugate, kind of in the middle. All right, so that's it for today on, on acids and bases. We'll kind of look at this in class, and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. Um, I guess that's it. Thanks a lot.